Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev. Tonight's teaching is about the scripture, the verse that changed my life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all have got a verse like that, but we're going to talk about the one that changed my life tonight. Have you ever had someone say to you, I've been thinking about you? While we assume the thoughts are good, we have no idea what they're thinking or how long they've even been thinking about us. <laughs> There's a pickup line that single men sometimes use on single women. It kind of goes like this. Girl, I'm so tired. You've been running through my mind all day. By the way, ladies, if a man ever uses that line on you, be flattered, but quickly ask him if he has a job. Does he have a five-year plan? If he doesn't answer yes to both of those questions, leave him in the rearview mirror of your life. On a spiritual level, God does bring people to our minds, people that he wants us to pray for. Sometimes he does it during the middle of the night. Even. True, true. We're going to talk about tonight, partially, somebody who's thinking about you mm -mm. all the time. Amen. 24-7. 1 Peter 5-7, the Living Bible. Let him have all your worries and cares, for he's always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. Now, I love that. Mm -hmm. He is always thinking about you. If you get nothing else from tonight's teaching, get a hold of that. God is always thinking about you. Hallelujah. Not only that, he's watching everything that, that concerns, concerns you. you. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? Amen. We need to all really embrace that and get it and grafted down in our spirit. One of my favorite scriptures, not the favorite or the one that changed my life, but here's a favorite. Psalm 4017, mm -hmm. the Living Bible. And by the way, the outline's on the websites. You can, uh, you can get the outline. 4017, the Living Bible. I am poor and weak, yet the Lord mm -hmm. is thinking about me right now. Right now. Right now. In fact, I think you ought to write down that last part of the verse underline it. Actually, I did kind of underline it. The Lord is thinking about me right now. Personalize that. The Lord is thinking about Norman right now. The Lord is thinking about Fred right, right now. now. This teaching is about each of us having the confidence, mm -hmm. the reward, the blessing, the benefit of knowing that God is thinking about us at this very moment. And he will enable us to do great and mighty things. Now, I vividly remember the first time I read, here it comes, Scripture changed my life. First time I read Jeremiah 29, 11. It stirred me deeply. It was the first time I ever looked up a verse in other translations. It helped me full, fully realize God's plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the New International Version. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. This scripture is so powerful that I found not seven, but nine powerful thoughts right. that God thinks towards you. Mm. Number one, God is thinking about you. That says it all. And, and add right now and you got it. That's God it. is thinking about you. Now, you're very blessed if you have parents who thought about you or maybe still do. I do. You're blessed when your spouse and children are thinking about you. She does. They do. It's nice when your boss is thinking about you. It's a joy knowing that you have friends who are thinking about you. But even if you didn't have anyone thinking about you, the best thing of all is when the, the scriptural assurance mm. of the master of the universe, Amen. the creator of heaven and earth, your Jehovah Shalom, your God of peace, is thinking about you right now. You know, that is so awesome, it almost defies description. It really does. Do it. In fact, it trumps anyone else. I didn't mean to use that in a political sense, but it trumps anyone else thinking about you in the world. That's right. <laughs> no comment. Jeremiah 29, 11, King James. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, 
thoughts of peace, not of evil, mm. to give you an expected end. I want you to get this where you remember it tomorrow and the next day yes. and every day hereafter. God is thinking about you. Mm. You may have felt that nobody knew you were alive. Maybe that includes your family. Sometimes, unfortunately, it does. But that's just not true. Because God, your Heavenly Father, is thinking about you right now. Let me quote one more time, Psalm 4017 in the Living Bible. Yes. It says, as you remember, I am poor and weak, yet the Lord is thinking about me right now. Consider these words found in 1 Corinthians 2.10, 2.10 in the Message Bible. And I suggest on the outline you look at it and read it very carefully and get it down inside you. Mm. It says, The Spirit, not content to flit around on the surface, dives into the, dives into the depths of God. Yes. And brings out what God planned all along. Whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except you yourself. Mm. The same with God. Except that He not only knows what He's thinking, but he lets us in on it. Hallelujah. God offers a full report on the gifts of life and salvation, the gifts that he's giving to us. We don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. We didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God, who taught us person to person through Jesus. Mm. And we're passing it on to you in the firsthand personal way. God will also let you in on what he's thinking about. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, God has plans for you. That's good. From the time you were born, somebody had plans for you. At least it seemed like it. Because, you know, your mom, well, she dressed you and fixed you up the way she wanted to. And your dad probably had plans, especially if he was going to want you involved in sports. Sometimes a girl's even in the sports because if you didn't have a boy first, you get be in the sports. The point being is your friends sometimes will come along and have plans for you. Your teachers had plans. that They had pl learning plans, and you are going to have to learn it this way. When you get married, your spouse probably has plans on how y'all's life is going to be together. Your employer has plans on what your job description is going to be. So the bottom line, though, that you get down to is throughout your life, there are a lot of people who have plans for you. However, the one most important person in your life has plans and they come first. Those are the plans that you want to discover and pursue through the word and, true, and find the true fulfillment and peace for your life here on earth. Jeremiah 29 11 in the Living Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The truth of the matter is God is planned really for you before you were ever conceived and before you were ever born on planet Earth. It doesn't matter if your mom or your dad didn't think that you were, you know, planned for. God has you here for a purpose and believe me, you are here and it is no surprise to anybody. The plan is, the, his plan is the ultimate plan. If he wanted you here, there's no mistakes about it. Jeremiah 1.5 in the Message Bible says, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. He tells us in Scripture, because he's no respecter of persons, if he had plans for Jeremiah, I promise you, he has plans for every one of us. Absolutely. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. The scripture is proof that there is no such thing as any illegitimate children. You can be assured that God didn't just plan for Jeremiah's life. I'm telling you, every life, every life that comes upon the earth was created for a purpose and a destiny. God needs all of us. He doesn't make any mistakes. There is a number of scriptures which emphasize the point that God has plans for you and that his plans... His plans are the only ones that really matter. It's true. Proverbs 19.21 in the Classic Amplified Bible says, Many plans are in, the man, in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose 
for him that will stand. That is good. Proverbs 19.21 New Century Version says people can make all kinds of plans, but only the Lord's plans will happen. I, I we really like the Message Bible translation. It says, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. Matter of fact, it's good to pray, Lord, your purpose prevail in my life, because that is really the plan that you want to live before the Lord. Not only does God have plans for you, but they're marvelous plans. Psalm 40, verse 5, this in the contemporary English version says, You, Lord God, have done many wonderful things, and you have planned marvelous things for us. No one is like you. Hallelujah. I would never be able to tell all you have done. And then there's one final question. Do you know the plans that God has for your life? He's ready to share them. Dive in that Bible and let him show them to you. Hallelujah. That was our daughter. Amy would say, swan dive into it. That's it. <laughs> Number three, God is thinking thoughts of peace towards you. Mm. We're living in perilous times. Where economic, political, and even pandemic circumstances can change in an instant. It's a sad and tragic commentary that there are those in this world who have a, such a callous disregard right. for human life. Mm. People who plot terror against others simply because they believe differently than they do. Um, or a callous disregard for the unborn human life. That's right. Um, and we could go on about that, but we need to move on. But in the midst of all this turbulence, Jehovah Shalom mm -hmm. is thinking thoughts of peace towards you. Amen. That's right. Everybody watching, no matter where you are in the world, at this very moment, right. Jehovah Shalom is thinking thoughts of peace About towards you. you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, American Standard Version. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith Jehovah, mm. thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you hope in your latter end. It's interesting to note that he's not thinking just thoughts of peace toward people in general. That's right. But rather thoughts of peace towards you, specifically. Specifically. That is. Not only is he thinking thoughts of peace towards you, he gives you instructions on how to keep, well, how to be mindful and keep your mind peaceful in the midst of the storms of life. Amen. Isaiah 26.3. Classic Amplify. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. Whose mind, both its inclination and its character, is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Amen. That's there are so numerous good. scriptures where we're told we can live and walk mm -hmm. in God's peace. However, the following scriptural admonition in Philippians 4.9. I think will lead us to peace. It says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, mm. and the God of peace shall be with you. Wow. It's not just enough to hear it, learn it, receive it. you got to do it. It says that you've seen in me, do, do. Mm. Number four, and it now even gets better. I know it's hard to believe. God has plans to prosper you. Mm. You know, if you've followed our teachings, either through the seminars or the blogs or the books or Rich Thoughts for Breakfast or any of the other ways that we reach out to them through ministry, you know that we frequently teach and preach scriptures on how God wants to make you prosper. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the New International Version, which we shared earlier, this kind of confirms that God has plans to prosper you. Because it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's not a matter of whether you're lucky or not, like winning a lottery or, you know, some scratch off in the McDonald's Monopoly millionaire game or whatever they have. The point is God has plans to prosper you beyond the realm of luck. It's not whether or not, you know, you get a big performance bonus or you, 
you know, that God prospers you or whether you have a rich relative and you hope to get a large inheritance from them. God still wants to prosper you regardless of the circumstances in which you live. It's not whether your investment portfolio is going to bring in huge dividends. God still has plans to prosper you. Hallelujah. So it's not really whether you found gold in the backyard or struck oil. <laughs> the point of it is, is God wants you to prosper. And it's great to know his principles of prosperity. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And here it is the hook. Even as thy soul prospereth. The bottom line is God will prosper us regardless of our circumstances, as long as we are prospering in his word. That means not just seeing it, reading it, but putting it to action. In Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2, classic Amplified Bible, it says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive, and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord, and on his law, the precepts, instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. That's what you call seriously putting the Word of God to use and active in your life. In your life, yep. Mm. Number five, God is not thinking evil about you. Hallelujah. If, if someone is thinking about you 24-7, it's comforting and reassuring to know Amen. that they're not thinking evil, but good thoughts towards you. You know, the scripture is clear. God is always mm. thinking good about each of us. Sometimes when we don't think good about ourselves. That's right. Jeremiah 29, 11, Classic Amplified. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Now, let me just say this. Your ex may be thinking evil towards you, but not God. By the way, you need to stop complaining about your ex and begin praising God for your next. Hallelujah. I should teach that. Psalm 56, 5. 56, 5, classic amplified. All day long they twist my words and trouble my affairs. Mm. All their thoughts are against me for evil and hurt. God is not thinking evil toward us, but he's expecting us to do our part against every assault of enemy, mm. the enemy. That's right. Psalm 15, sorry, Psalm 25. Verses 19 and 20. Consider my enemies, for they abound. They hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep me, Lord, and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed or disappointed, for my trust and refuge are in you. Mm. Number six, God will not abandon you. Sadly, there are many people who have been abandoned in their lives. Spouses, children, I mean, even employers and employees have suffered abandonment. And it's a deep hurt, a very deep hurt. However, we have the assurance that God will not and never will abandon us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, this in the Message Bible, it says, I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Mm. Psalm 27, verse 10 in the Living Bible says, For if my father and mother ab should abandon me, you would welcome and comfort me. We need to cling to those if you're in this kind of a situation. Deuteronomy 4, 21. This in the New Living Translation. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy or forget the solemn covenant he made with your ancestors. And Joshua 1.5, there's so much ammunition here that you need to take it to heart, meditate on it until the Lord just fills you with his peace. This in the New Living Translation. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. 
for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. The scriptures are so clear. You know, people may come and go in your life. They might. But God, hallelujah, will never abandon you. And you can take that to the bank. That's two of our favorite words. But God. That's it. But God. Mm. Number seven. God's plans are to give you hope. Yes. The scripture says in Proverbs 13, 12, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Jeremiah 29, 11, this time in New International Reader's Version. I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. This scripture isn't just saying that we have the hope of the sweet by and by, though right. we do. It says we have hope for years to come. Healing, well, let me say it this way. Hope is the healing bomb mm. that makes everything right. Hope takes away the pain of loss so that we can anticipate better days. Hope can be defined as the search for and anticipation of good through that's achievable through God's help and direction. Romans 5, 5, classic amplified. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. Mm. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Mm. God will give you, each of you here, those of you watching around the world, God will give you hope when we make Him our focus. That's right. Isaiah 26.3, classic amplified. You will guard Him and keep Him in perfect and constant peace whose mind, both its inclination and its character, mm. is stayed on you because He commits Himself to you, leans on you, and He hopes confidently in you. That is always so good. Worth repeating. Yep. Number eight. Remember I told you God wants you to prosper? Well, listen to this. God wants you to enjoy success. Now, yes, this he is does. in addition to prospering. You know, God wants us to be successful in everything that we put our hands to do. Barely getting by or giving up, is, it, they're just not sentiments that God embraces because he is giving us the formula for success in his word. Here is Jeremiah 29, 11 in the New International Reader's Version again because it says it so well. I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. We could read that over and over and over. We and could, over. because God wants uh, you, he wants you to enjoy success. Yes, he does. Have you ever seen anywhere in the Bible, really, where God delights in so when someone fails or falls or, you know, have you ever seen him take pride in anybody's failure? You won't because it's not in the book. He's no. giving us success stories. Even when people fell down, they got back up again. Not only does God want us to succeed, he wants it extended to our whole family. He proves it by telling us that his covenant of love extends to a thousand generations. That's in numerous scriptures throughout the Bible. Example, Exodus 26, 20 verse 6, classic amplified but showing mercy and steadfast love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Psalm 105 verse 8 in the classic Amplified says, he, earnestly, he is earnestly mindful of his covenant and forever it is imprinted on his heart. The word which he commanded and established to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 5, 10 Verse and seven, verse nine, and you'll have to go on the outline for this. Don't get too confused. First Chronicles sixteen, fifteen also confirms that he does this for a thousand generations. We encourage you to look them up and meditate on those because God truly loves you and all your family. Second Samuel. 23.5 in the New Living Translation says, It is not my family. Is it not my family God has chosen? Yes. He has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. He will ensure my safety and success. 
our Heavenly Father wants us to be successful, but we must also, you know, in His Word, regardless of, take His Word, regardless of circumstances, situations, and problems we fall into. In 1 Chronicles 22, 13, we're given lots of ammunition here. In the New Living Translation, it says, For you will be successful if you carefully obey the decrees and regulations that the Lord gave to Israel through Moses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or lose heart. God wants us to be successful, but we've got a part to play. We, the decisions we make today determine our destiny tomorrow. Hallelujah. Number nine, God has plans to give you a future. Mm. I've seen your future, and it looks great. No, I'm not a psychic or a prophet. I'm just a man who believes the Word of God. Hallelujah. And everything it says. Jeremiah 29, 11, New Century Version. I say this because I know what I'm planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I'll give you hope and a good future. God not only thinks about us, He wants to prosper us, but He's also planned out our future. Psalm 37, 37, New Living Translation. Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. Hmm. Now, if you're ready to shout, here comes 1 Timothy Ooh. 6, 18 and 19, New Living Translation. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they'll be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so they may experience true life. Mm. You're going to love 1 Timothy 6, 8, 19, this time in the Message Bible. Tell them to go after God, who piles on all the riches we could ever manage, to do good, mm. to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If we do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, mm. gaining life that is truly life. Truly life. In fact, the benefit of Jeremiah 29, 11, I think is found in those two verses in 1 Timothy 6. Now, that's something to get excited about. It is. And when I, when I, when I read Jeremiah 29, 11 and different translations, and I came to understand that God had plans for me. Mm. As it says, he, he has thoughts toward me. He's thinking about me, and he's sending thoughts for me to receive mm. and act on. Amen. And that's an exciting We prospect. are so blessed. Yes, we are. And we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, if you've been blessed by the teaching, take your mouse, go to where it says, sow a seed, and just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. Uh, we do ask that you join us every morning mm -hmm. at uh, you Eight, know, 830, 830 Eastern. Eastern every day. You'll be blessed that you do. And uh, I already know what we're teaching in the next three days. Yeah. So I'm kind of fired up about it. I really am. Hallelujah. Well, enjoy this last day of August. That's it. In 2020. Tom it'll be tomorrow. It's the last no, tomorrow, day. Yeah, tomorrow. Thank you. But you can join us for Rich Thoughts. We're going to talk about it. For the last day of August. In fact, the last time in August that you can listen to us in 2020 That's is right. tomorrow. Yeah, so tune in. <laughs> Think right. about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, until tomorrow morning, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.